Higher level matrix decompositions provide a great deal of improvement when it comes to simplicity and performance over the more general counterparts. Previously, we took a look at the Shalesky matrix decomposition, a higher level variant of the Lu decomposition. But what about the LDV matrix decomposition? Its higher level variant is going to be the topic of today's video. Howdy folks, welcome to the eighth episode in this computational linear algebra series where we are going to be covering the LDL transpose matrix decomposition. Before we begin, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns throughout this video, do not hesitate to let me know in the comments section. Additionally, I hope that at some point or by the end of this video, I will have earned your like and or your subscription. Let's get started. And let's first review the LDV matrix decomposition. We have a lower triangular matrix, a diagonal matrix in the middle, and then a modified upper triangular matrix. You may already be able to see what we're doing here with this, but remember the key thing with this particular matrix decomposition. We want unique values in this diagonal matrix. And right now, it's you may be saying, well, why? Why do we care about that? And I can't really give you a good answer other than when we get to applications of computational linear algebra and a lot of these matrix decompositions, you will see why this diagonal matrix is incredibly important. It's really the big main focus of this, but without those applications, I can't provide too much of an explanation as to why. But stay tuned at the end for some quick notes because those applications are coming up and I'll discuss them a little bit more at the end. Now our LDL transpose matrix decomposition looks very similar. However, you'll notice one key thing. We need to keep track of one less matrix since our modified upper triangular matrix is now our lower triangular matrix transposed. Again, we want our diagonal matrix in the middle to have unique values in it. But now, with this higher level matrix decomposition, we need to keep track of one less thing, which really makes things a lot simpler. So how did we do our LDV matrix decomposition? Let's just quickly review that. Well, we set it equal to our LU decomposition and used a comparison of LU to LDV to help us out, where then we went ahead and set U equal to DV and found this relationship, and then we're able to exploit that to do our LDV matrix decomposition. And we want to do the same thing with our Shalesky decomposition, but we have a little bit of a problem here, and it's a mistake on my part. In the last episode, I introduced the Shalesky decomposition with this L by L transpose notation. And unfortunately, uh, that was not the best notation for me to choose because if we set that equal to LDL transpose, we restrict our diagonal matrix to the identity matrix, which obviously does not give us unique values in the matrix. So we're not going to use this notation any longer for the Shalesky decomposition. Instead, we're going to go with C by C transpose. Then we can actually set this equal to our LDL transpose matrix decomposition, and we have something useful to take a look at and exploit. C here is our Shalesky factor, which again is the one matrix that we need when performing the Shalesky matrix decomposition. So moving that over so we can examine it a little bit more, we can start to play some interesting tricks here. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to rewrite our diagonal matrix as the square root uh, of that matrix squared. That way, we can go ahead and pull off this next little trick, exploiting the fact that the transpose of a diagonal matrix is just that same diagonal matrix. So we can rewrite this as L by root D by root D transpose by L transpose. And from this, we can compare this to our Shalesky decomposition, and we can see that our Shalesky factor is equal to L by root D. If we examine this relationship, that our Shalesky factor is equal to L by root D, uh, we can restrict the diagonal values of our Shalesky factor to just the values uh, of that square root of our diagonal matrix. And that restricts the values of our lower triangular matrix, or at least the diagonals of that lower triangular matrix, to 1. Remember, this is something that we did with the LDV matrix decomposition to really simplify things and make sure that we get 
unique values in our diagonal matrix. So we have something that looks a little bit like this, and, is, and if we multiply everything through, you can really begin to see how simple this really is. One of the key things that you can actually begin to see is that the first column's diagonal value is actually multiplied all the way through down the column. Similarly, with the second di with with the second diagonal value going through the entire second column, and then if we were to have a larger matrix, it would go all the way through, just multiplying all the way down through all the different columns. This is going to make it really easy to code up. And so here is our code. Of course, it is all publicly available on my GitHub and GitLab pages. Link in the description down below. I'll encourage you to fork the repo or clone the repo and begin messing with and playing with this code. All the code for this episode is under the 8th episode directory in that repository. And we're going to start off looking in the linalg package. So we're defining a new function called LDLT for LDL transpose where we're passing in an A matrix. You can see the first thing that we're doing is we're doing our Cholesky decomposition and getting our Cholesky factor. We're getting our indices and everything, and then we're setting up a dummy matrix for our diagonal matrix, and then we're just storing a copy of our Cholesky factor so that we're not messing with it. Then we just need one simple for loop here where we are going ahead and we are getting the values of our diagonal matrix simply by squaring the diagonal values of our Cholesky factor. If we go back and take a look at it, obviously we only have the square root on all of these, so if we square each one of them, we should just have the values we needed for our diagonal matrix. Then in line 99, we can use a, a little bit of arithmetic to establish our values for our lower triangular matrix, where we are going to be taking each one of the columns and multiplying it by the inverse square root uh, right here of our diagonal matrix. And so what we're doing here is let's just say we're using we're trying to solve for C21. Well we have uh, C21 is equal to L21 by root D11. So if we just want L21, we just do L21 is equal to C21 by D11 inverse square root. Simple and straightforward, and we're just doing that running all the way down each one of the different columns with this colon notation right here. And then we're just returning our lower triangular uh, matrix and our diagonal matrix, because again, we only need to keep track of two matrices here. Really simple, really straightforward. You can go ahead and take a look at the driver code uh, that is just LDLT driver. You can see we're generating a random 3x3A three three matrix that might look fairly familiar from the Cholesky video. But then we're just displaying our A matrix out. Then we are doing our LDL transpose matrix decomposition, printing those out to the terminal window. And then to check that everything is working correctly, we're taking our randomly generated A matrix and subtracting off LDL transpose. So when we perform this check of A minus LDL transpose, we should get the zero matrix out if everything is working properly. But remember, for higher level matrix decompositions, we need to satisfy our initial conditions. And I purposely didn't mention that yet because remember, if a matrix is not positive definite, we cannot perform the Cholesky decomposition, so therefore we cannot perform our LDL transpose matrix decomposition. That is the only requirement to do the LDL transpose matrix decomposition. So here you can see from the Cholesky function we wrote last time, our matrix is not positive definite, so we are raising this exception, and it's letting us know it is not happy. But if everything works out properly, you should see something like this. I'll encourage you to, again, fork the code, clone the code, obtain it in one way or another via GitHub or GitLab, and start to play with it. And this is what you should see when everything works out properly. We have our lower triangular matrix. Again, one's along the diagonal right here. And then we have unique values in our diagonal matrix. And then when we check everything out, we get the zero matrix back. So everything is working properly.
Now, I'm only going to be doing Python in this particular video. For those of you who have been following along with MATLAB or Octave, I apologize, but we're going to be moving into applications very, very soon. And eventually, I'd like to start getting into doing linear algebra with some lower level languages. But for the most part, as I understand it, a lot of you are probably going to be using Python and translating stuff from Python into Octave or MATLAB code is not particularly difficult. But since we're building up a uh, this LinAlg package here, it's a lot easier for us to see all the back end workings in Python, whereas we're not really doing that uh, in Octave and MATLAB. Now, I know that for a while I've been talking about uh, getting to applications, but we're getting to the applications of computational linear algebra very, very soon. In fact, we just need to cover another matrix decomposition called the SVD. It's not going to be our last matrix decomposition, but it will be uh, a very important one. And then we need to cover how to deal with non-square matrices. And then we will be at the point where we'll be taking a look at some of the applications of linear algebra as it pertains to uh, computational linear algebra. And there's a lot of really cool stuff to happen with that. And it will make all of these matrix decompositions make a lot more sense of why we're covering them so much. I really need to apologize because I know that it's sort of bland, boring content. We're just covering and going over these matrix decompositions. But they're really incredibly important in uh, understanding how we actually can apply linear algebra, mainly these matrix decompositions, to do really cool things like data compression, image manipulation, and do and even mess with things like AI and machine learning. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, again, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. I want to thank you all very much for watching. I'm Nick, one of many Space Cowboys. I hope that you're enjoying your time in your life here in our galactic neighborhood of the Orion Spur in the Milky Way galaxy. Hope to see you again next time.